run as counters. Asynchronous counters. As earlier mentioned, asynchronous counters are counters whereby one, only one flip flop, only one flip flop is cropped. And when we talk of being clocked, one flip flop is clocked by the clock input signal. So only one out of the end flip-flops is clocked by the clock input signal. Then the output of the previous, the output of the previous flip-flop, the output of the previous flip-flop clocks the next flip-flop. So if you have a counter, which is of a synchronous uh, form, the number of flip-flops to be used in the counter is determined by the highest count. So we write the highest count in binary form, and from that we determine the number of flip-flops. For example, if you want a counter to count from zero to seven, the highest count is seven. We write seven in binary form, which is one, 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 and that has three bits. So this has three bits and therefore we need three flip-flops. So we will use three flip-flops to design an asynchronous counter that counts from zero to seven. So the flip-flops will be connected in this kind of an arrangement. So if you have the three flip-flops, these are the three flip-flops. All of them have an input clock pin. So we clock only one of them. So this one will be clocked by a clock signal. And then the output, each of them has an output and an inverted output, an output and an inverted output, an output and its inverted output. So the output of the previous clocks the next. So the output of this becomes the clock to the second flip-flop. And then the output of these flip-flops clocks the next, which is our flip-flop. In most of the cases, we'll be use the flip-flop in what we call the toggle mode. That means in most of the cases for the asynchronous counter, we use the JK flip-flop because we know that when the JK flip-flop has the input as one one, then the output is going to toggle. So all the inputs of the flip-flop, if it was a JK flip-flop, if this was a JK flip-flop, the JK inputs, the JK inputs of the flip-flops will be connected to a high or a one. So all this will be connected to a high so that whenever a clock input is available to the flip-flop, the flip-flop is going to talk. And through this, we achieve an asynchronous counter of mod N. So the counter will be of mod N, where N is the highest count, which depends on the number of flip-flops that we use in that case. So if we were to design a JK flip-flop, that is a synchronous uh, counter that counts from zero to seven using the JK flip-flop. This would be the setup. All the JK inputs of the flip-flops will be connected to a high. We clock the first flip-flop or the flip-flop that posts the least significant bit. And then the output of the previous flip-flop becomes the clock input to the next flip-flop in that arrangement and through that we are able to implement <clears throat> an asynchronous counter using the jk flip-flop 
let's consider this and simulate one in Proteus. So we will start by having the three flip-flops. So on the library, we can pick the JK flip-flop. Pick the JK flip-flop. So 74, 76 would be a JK flip-flop. Pick that and then we insert it. So we need three flip flops. Those are the three flip flops. You can enlarge the screen. Then we do the connections, the basic connections. So the output of this one is supposed to be the clock input to this one. And then the output of this flip flop becomes the in the clock signal to our next flip flop like that. Then you can have a single clock signal that triggers the first flip flop. So this signal will be used to clock the first flip flop. Then all the JK inputs must be connected to a high. I can use a DC source and ensure that the value or the voltage of the DC source is five volts or a high. So all these JK inputs will be connected to the five volt source. So those are the connections to the five volt source. Okay, then we make sure that the DC source is five volts. That's five volts for us. Next, we need to display the output. We can use a seven segment display. For us to use a seven segment display, we need a decoder. So for example, I can use 7446, which is a common anode decoder. So there's this common anode decoder. This is the decoder. Then D is the most significant bit because it has four inputs, A, B, C, and D. D is the most significant bit. That's because we are using only three bits, we will ground the most significant bit of our decoder. So pin D will be grounded. Then C is the next most significant bit, which will be connected to our first flip-flop, followed by B. And finally, A, which is the least significant bit, will be connected to the output of the flip-flop that hosts the least significant bit. Next, we need to connect the display. We use a seven segment display, so we can type display. We'll be able to choose a colored seven segment display. So in this case, I can choose a seven segment display, common anode, sorry. We need a seven segment display. So this is a common anode, which is red in color, and it would work for us. So we can use the common cathode, which is red in color. Let me change this. Let me use a different one. The display. So you are using a common not I can use this one, this blue in color. Okay, I chose this so that the connections to the outputs of the decoder would be direct. So these are the direct connections that we make from the outputs of the decoder to the seven segment display. So we make all the connections from the decoder to the display. Once you've done that, then being a common anode display, we need to connect this pin to a high. 
So again, I can use a DC source and make sure that the value of the voltage is five volts, which is our high. So you make this five volts. So those are the relevant connections we need to make. So the JK inputs, you can confirm they are connected to a high, all of them. The least significant bit is clocked by our clock signal. The output of the first one clocks the next one and the output of the second one clocks the last one. And that sounds like it. And we can simulate our circuit. So we run our circuit counts from zero to seven. As you can see, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and back to zero. And that is our asynchronous mod n, two power n, sorry, mod two power n counter, where n is the number of flip flops that we use. Thank you so much.